Uh, just the presenter view. Cool. Uh, good morning. My name is Shen Li, and uh, I'm a fire analyst with Northern Forestry Center, uh, working with the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. So today I'm presenting a project that I worked with Mike and uh, Piyush. Uh, the title is Predicting Extreme Wildfire Growth Events uh, in Western Canada Using Atmospheric Stability Indexes. Uh, so for today, I'm going to talk briefly about stability, instability, the analysis I did, preliminary results, summary, and some challenges and uh, next steps. So stability and uh, instability. Uh, as we're, uh, all we know, uh, the rising airs can only cool at the either dry adiabatic lab street or the moist adiabatic lab street. Uh, the dry adiabatic lab street uh, is the rate that an unsaturated air will cooling when it's moving vertically. On the other hand, the moist uh, adiabatic lap rate is, uh, uh, is a saturated air will move vertically, uh, when, will, will follow when it moves vertically. So uh, an object is said to be stable. Uh, it is when it put into motion, uh, it will return to its original position. So, where is my mouse? So it's it's in this diagram is whenever the air on the same uh, height when the uh, air parcel temperature is smaller than the environmental temperature, and it always uh, uh, leads to uh, relatively uh, few clouds, steady winds. Uh, also, generally dry conditions and often have temperature inversions. On the other hand. An object is said to be unstable as if it is wants to be uh, put into disturbed, it will continue the path it's being uh, pushed. And uh, uh, in this situation, it always leads to the development of convective clouds, uh, sometimes thunderstorms, lightning, and the potential, uh, potential of the uh, pyro CBs. And, and the probably uh, leads to erratic fire behaviors. Uh, so um, stability has a direct and a indirect influence on the fire behavior and the fire growth. For example, uh, an unstable air mass can develop uh, convective columns, uh, and sometimes it generates pyro CB. Um, so it will have a direct impact of the fire growth and the fire behavior. But in this situation, uh, we need to consider if the fields are dry because uh, those convective activities can also uh, result in uh, showers and the rains. Uh, the stability also have an indirect inference uh, to uh, fire by inferencing the uh, wind speed, temperature, and the humidity in the Earth's surface. So um, the relationship between the stability and the wildfires uh, have, has not been extensively studied, especially in Canadian climate. So for this research, we want to answer the question uh, about can we use stability indexes to predict uh, extreme fire weather events? Uh, and uh, which, instable, which stability indexes are the best to relate to the fire growth event in uh, Western Canada? Uh, for this study, uh, we used the models and the verse hotspots to map the fire growth. Uh, and uh, for this presentation, uh, we only used the 2015 uh, fires as a trial basis. Uh, the final fire parameters are from um, MTBS, uh, Alaska Fire Management Agencies, and the Canadian National Fire Database. And we include the fires that is uh, uh, bigger than 5,000 hectares uh, because we, we want to study those more extreme fire, uh, fire events. And it, we include the fires are between 40 to 70 degrees latitude. To map those uh, daily fire progression, we first uh, tested the hotspots within the final air, uh, area burned polygon. Then we interpolate uh, to the accumulated area burned for the past uh, 24 hours. So, so this map on the top left, uh, it's an example of the daily fire progression by 
uh, it's a burden fire and it's the uh, the bar is uh, the day of the year. And you can see the progression of that fire daily. And the uh, figure on the on the lower left uh, shows the accumulated area burns uh, by day of year and specifically within those uh, spread days as uh, uh, to a relationship of more area burn uh, during those spread, uh, spread days. So uh, what is a spread day? Uh, to define a spread day, uh, we use Shenley Wang's approach, which are days where the growth given a delta value bigger than 480 meters, uh, or it is um, a fire running at two meters per uh, uh, minute for four hours. Uh, when we uh, detect that growth event, we define uh, we will categorize that day as a spread day. So here uh, is a map shows the locations of the 2015 fires we studied. Uh, overall, we have about 265 uh, fires included in this uh, in this uh, analysis, a uh, trial analysis. And you, as you can see, that the oops, the fires are mostly uh, distributed in the Western Canada, Alaska, and part of the Pacific region. Uh, for those 256 fires. Uh, we uh, we also look into the fire size distribution as shown in this figure uh, that most of the fire, more than 50%, oh, sorry, 90% of the uh, fires are between 5,000 hectares to 50,000 hectares. And there's, uh, there's a few extremely large fires that are over 50,000 uh, hectares. And also we look into the distribution of the number of fire days, uh, number of spread days, and number of non-spread days. So number of number of fire oops, number of fire days are are shown as the green bar. Uh, number of uh, spread days are shown as the red bar. And uh, the number of non-spread days are shown as the green bar. So what it tells us is uh, overall, we have about 33% of the fire spread days uh, are classified as the um, spread day. Uh, and uh, within those spread days, we, uh, it typically ranges for uh, an average of those 256 fires. Uh, the spread days are from zero days to 15 days and with a medium value of four days. And also an interesting observation is that <laughs> The frequency of the non-spread days is as much uh, is about twice of the spread days, which is, which makes a lot of sense. Next, we look into the uh, spread days versus the fire signs fire size. Uh, so for the uh, this is a really simple uh, linear regression of the number of uh, the three days. Um, versus the fire signs, fire size uh, for uh, uh, every uh, thousand hectare. So as you can see, the number of fire days, spread days and non-spread days are all positively correlated to the size of wildfire. The mouse is really not in control today. Uh, and uh, uh, by interestingly, uh, the number of spread days which is showing as the uh, the red the red uh, bar sorry the red uh, red line uh, have the most positive correlation within those wildfire sciences. So, which lead us to wondering uh, what what is the relationship uh, between those uh, in st the stability indexes and the number of spread days. So to do that, we need to uh, uh, calculate the uh, instability indexes. Uh, this slide is really simple, but a lot of uh, calculations uh, in behind. We, we choose uh, four stability indexes, which are the hands index. Uh, I will try to do a really quick summary of each index. Uh, so for the hands index, it's a, it's a sum of uh, stability component 
which is the temperature lapse rate, and a humidity component, which is a dew point depression. And the Hans index are categorical from, uh, from uh, one to six. Uh, continuous Hans is developed in Australia, and uh, it's a continuation, it's improvement of the Hans index. Uh, it converts the discrete uh, inputs of the Hans index into a linear function of the temperature lapse rate. So it allows you allows the uh, values to go uh, beyond the six and uh, can categorize uh, in climate with more drier uh, uh, temperatures or uh, more dry climate. And the uh, show order stability indexes index is used to access the uh, 850 uh, millibar parcel stability. So if you uh, uh, lift a, a parcel uh, from uh, 850 to uh, a millibar to 500 millibar, the temperature difference between the air parcel and the environment temperature is a value of the show order indexes. And uh, the last one is a convective uh, available potential energy. Uh, so it is a measurement of a convection potential for a parcel. Uh, so to calculate those uh, four indexes, we used the three hourly uh, North American regional reanalysis data set. And uh, uh, we uh, calculated the daily maximum map value of those indexes because the spread event days are calculated daily. We want to match, uh, match with that. And then we extracted the stability indexes to the center of the fire for each day. Uh, here, these slides uh, give you our uh, idea about the uh, temporal and the spatial dynamic of the show order indexes. Uh, as you can see, it, it, it varies uh, quite greatly uh, over different regions and over different uh, uh, different time. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that for show order index, uh, it can go with negative values. And the, the more negative value the show order is, the larger potential of instability. So here, as you can see, uh, if a show order uh, index is, um, uh, if it's positive, it's indicating um, uh, stay more stable. And it's, if it's uh, negative and it's the more negative, for example, if it's smaller, uh, smaller than negative six, it is indicating extreme unstable and heavy to strong thunder potential. Um, so because of the time uh, for, uh, for our uh, preliminary results uh, that we, uh, uh, we find that the show order has the most uh, correlation uh, within the spread event days among the hands index, continuous hands index, and the CAPE. Uh, CAPE is the second best correlated with those spread event days. So uh, for this presentation, we were gonna be, uh, the results we're gonna show uh, for the next two, three slides, we're focusing on uh, the show order uh, index. But if you're interested, uh, we can send you the results for the other indexes too. Um, so here we did a comparison of the uh, show order index distribution in spread day and the uh, non-spread day. Here, uh, I apologize in, uh, in advance, I reversed the color bar. Here, the, uh, the spread event day is the, is the, the green bar, the, the green uh, distribution, and the, the long spread days is the, uh, is the red. And uh, we also wanted to uh, capture, other than uh, the show order distribution uh, in spread day and non-spread day, uh, we also wanted to differentiate the, the dry days, which are represented by FFMC categories here. Because as mentioned earlier, that uh, uh, strong instability can result in rents and that will, uh, uh, will reduce the fire activities. So here we did the, we, uh, when the FMC uh, is higher, which means the condition, the fuels are drier, which means we could use that as an indicator of no rains. So here, um, this, this, um, uh, this simple distribution <laughs> showed that 
uh, the distribution of show water in all fire days, fire days over FFMC 84 and uh, fire days over FFMC 91. Uh, as you can see here, there's no much difference uh, in uh, all fire days and also for fire days over FFMC for 48 for spread days and non-spread days. But when, uh, when uh, we uh, do the distribution of uh, uh, fire days, on, only for fire days over FFMC 91, you can see the uh, distribution of the show order on the spread days have uh, uh, more negative values compared to uh, the non-spread days, which has more uh, positive values, which tells us that uh, the show order in the non-spread days has uh, uh, indication of more instability. But what does that really mean? Um, uh, let's. Uh, we also looked at the uh, wind speed. So in this plot, it, it's the same thing, but we add another uh, another variable, which is the wind speed for uh, for the. Uh, linear relation of show order and uh, and the wind speed because lots of those uh, <clears throat> extreme uh, uh, large fire events are wind driving uh, fires. So here, as you can see, there is a uh, <clears throat> for the spread days there is a pretty um, strong relationship of the uh, wind spread and the show order. And this relationship is stronger when the fuel is drier, which when the FMC is higher. So what does that tell us? Still very hard to, uh, to, to categorize. So we, we did a uh, show order distribution uh, in low wind days and in high wind days. Here we did the uh, cut off for 15 kilometers per hour. So bigger than 15 kilometers hours are the high wind days. And lower than that is a low one days. And we did the distribution of the show order and the, the uh, in spread days and non spread days for all, for all, fi all fire events, for, for all fire days, fire days over FMC 84 and fire days over FMC 91. Um, so that's a lot of <laughs> uh, distribution plot, but if you can. Sorry, if you can focusing on the uh, right bottom, which is the low wind days with fire days over FMC 91, you can see a really uh, strong difference between the show order distribution in the spread days and long spread days. And in the low, low wind days and more drier fields which there's a strong, uh, strong relationship there. That's something we find it's really uh, interesting. So uh, as a really quick summary of this uh, trial analysis that we find the atmospheric, atmospheric stability or instability is important for the wildfire. Uh, and the show order stability index seems to be uh, important when fuels are dry and winds are light. And probably could be a potential uh, indicators be used to the fire, uh, to predicting the fire, extreme fire growth events. And the last point is the low wind share is important for piracy bees. So what are the challenges of this type of analysis is that uh, we need better data, that we need uh, to have a better reanalysis data set for the stability index calculation. And we also need to include multiple fires for more diverse climatology. Because for this analysis, we only did 2015. And also uh, the challenges also lies into correlate the stability with the actual fire spread. Here we uh, used the, the spread day and we used fire weather, but there has better uh, uh, indicators to use, but it's hard to characterize. So for next step, we wanted to do the calculate Sorry, it's calculated the stability index use a better reanalysis data set, ERA5, and extend the analysis to different fire years. Uh, and the zoom in the analysis to specific, specific fires so that we can do the time series analysis of 
stability indices during the entire event of uh, extreme fire. And also we like to compare the stability with rate of spread so that we can uh, not only just for fire weather, so we can relate uh, or more be able to relate the stability with the fire behavior and fire growth. And lastly, we could also look at the field types for the analysis. So uh, this is all my uh, presentation. Uh, thanks for the uh, Canada Wildfire and uh, Alberta Agriculture Forestry uh, for the funding.